as you can see from there and the wetness on the deck, it is a rainy day. Now, it didn't stop me, obviously, from grilling, but if it was super rainy right now, it's kind of crappy to grill in. And when it's snowing and you get snow all over the top of your grill, it's a little hard to keep temp. So in this video, what we are going to do is I'm actually going to put a roof right up here. It'll cover over the grill and the blackstone, and then I can cook all year round, no matter the weather. Let's get to it. Let's get dusty. Okay, before I start cutting all this pile of wood behind me, I need to actually get dimensions. So that's what you're probably watching me do right now is I'm actually just going out and I'm measuring using a plumb bob to figure out where the roof's going to sit. It's going to give me basically the idea of the frame size that I need to make and also the angle from the pitch of the roof that I'm trying to get copied. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I want this fascia to sit flat off of the edge of this roof. I don't want it to get all weird looking, whatever. I want it to sit flat. So I needed to know the angle that I needed to cut at. Now, the way that I did it, and I'm sure there's a fancy way to do it, is because I have a wood floor, what I did, come on down, let me show you, is I figured out the drop that I'm using over the span of the roof that I'm doing. So I'm dropping nine inches in a 40 inch, whatever, 40 inch slope. So whatever that gives me. So what it is, I'm using this piece of plywood for the floor, is I measured up from this corner up nine inches, and I measured over 40 inches to here. And then I used a right angle to give me a perfect line there. And then all I had to do was I took a scrap board, lined them up perfectly, something in that region right there, drew my lines to make sure that my, with the straight edges right there, drew my lines, and then I took it over to the miter saw over here, Using the laser on the miter saw, I was able to connect my dots and give me my angle, which is 15 degrees. Then I brought it back down and I checked it. And that gives me the angles I need to cut for all of the uh, rafters, I guess you'd call them. And because I wanted to give a, a, the illusion that the roof line is seamless all the way down, I then just took that scrap board that I cut, I just laid it on the roof itself, and I looked and there we go. So now we can start actually cutting some wood. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out where the rafter is going to sit over here so I can run my post up because I'm going to cut the top part of this post off right where this seam is here and then I'm just going to add to that running up and then I'm going to run a full two full posts right there all the way to the bottom of the deck and I'm going to run off this post the arm that'll come up hopefully that will give it enough support so I won't have another piece in my way so I'm just trying to figure out using masks where that is going to lie so I can don't have to have a weird setup and I can screw those two posts straight into the rafters All right, so technically, because of the post that I just cut and this post, I'm combining two posts and to make one solid post. And that being the post that's by the handrail, people are going to grab it a lot more. And it's also going to have that arm that comes off, so it's got, it needs to be strong. So what I'm going to do, and if you're wondering why I didn't remove it and put a whole post in, because it seemed like a lot more work. So what I'm going to do is, you can see I have this X here in the center. I'm going to do the same thing on that post out on the deck. 
I'm gonna drill a hole in each one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, ideally I'd use rebar because it's smaller in diameter, but I'm going to put a piece of conduit in there, probably about four or five inches on each side. And then that should, ideally if I do it right, center to center, that will actually have, I'll have that section of, of conduit in there and that'll really help reinforce it. And then obviously I'm going to glue it and then do a bunch of toenailing stuff in. That's how we're gonna make that a solid post. My whole design for this side was to avoid putting a leg right here, and that's why I have this cross support right here. <sighs> but I live in Michigan, and I'm not just trying to protect this from the rain, I'm also protecting it from the snow. And the snow can get pretty heavy, and this still has a lot of flex. Um, so it's flexing off of this back support, and I thought it was flexing actually where I seamed these two together. So I actually ran a complete one by four all up and down the side of it. Um, that didn't work. I ran a angled board from here down. That didn't work. It's still got a lot of flex in it. And I think safety wise, and just makes more sense to just do it. So I'm gonna have to put a board there. I didn't wanna do it cause it's gonna feel a lot more congested in there now. It's trying to keep this for just an open feel, but I think safety wise, I just gotta do it. Not happy about it. But I'm gonna do it anyway. But not happy. All right, so this is the roof that we we're gonna put on top. Now, went with a metal roof because uh, I just felt like it was the best idea for the design. Um, never done any type of metal roof before, but it can't be that hard. So. <clears throat> I think there's nothing to it but to do it at this point. So let's do it. So if you're gonna cut metal roofing with a circular saw, I would highly recommend getting a metal blade because turning a wood blade backwards, which I've done for like soffit and fascia and stuff, does not work very well. I mean, it gets the job done, but I'm pretty sure I'm toasting this blade. Got him cut, let's put him up. I don't know a lot about metal roofing. I've never done it before. There are a couple things that I do know. One, is I do know that you want to keep it square as possible. Two, I know that you want to try to run all of your screws in some form of pattern. And that's about what I know. Oh, and that you should keep your cut, cut sides up there and not down here because you're not going to see them. That's what I know.
So now in case you're wondering why I didn't just run this under the roof or on the roof or over the roof or under the roof, what I did here was I added gutters recently, not too long ago, and I did that so that the, t the stuff off of the main roof will come in here and then this will obviously act as that. So that's my plan for diversion of actual water without having to butt these two actually up together. Because I was afraid if I put this roof over this, it would discolor the shingles weird, or when I had to redo the roof, it would be kind of difficult. And I couldn't go underneath this roof, like underneath, way underneath here, because of the fact that that would sh make this thing so low that I don't think I wouldn't feel safe with the grill. So now that the roof is done, you might be thinking, we're done. No, because I want this thing to look very seamless right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add fascia around this. And I'm actually gonna do the brown aluminum fascia in front of it, like the rest of the house has underneath the gutters to kind of make it look more of a seamless transition. So let's do that. All right. And with that, just gotta clean up, and we are done. Okay guys, the deck cooking area overhaul is complete. The last video you saw me recess the black stone, and now this, I put that roof on. Now, if you're wondering about lighting-wise, yes, it is going to be a little bit darker in there. Um, I was going to do the clear plastic panels, but those are plastic, and with the heat from the grill, didn't think that was going to work out too well. So, speaking of heat from the grill, if you're worried, I'm going to light my house on fire. I've done a lot of technical testing over the past two years that I've been wanting to build this. So, what I've done is when the grill is at max capacity... I stand up and I try to get my hand, like I stand on this thing over here, and I try to put my hand to see how high I can go without being burnt. Usually it's about here. So I have about 12, 16 inches that I have for play. If I see or I feel like it is getting a little too hot, I will just put another panel, metal panel right here, kind of as like a heat shield, and I should be fine to go. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I do have a party coming up in a couple days, so I will give you guys some bonus footage of this all working. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let there be light. So I did end up adding a light in here. Um, getting kind of towards dusk, it was getting pretty dark back here because of the, the roof. So I did add the light, as you can see. I added a dual light there conduit runs down to my little switch so that is pretty bright it's really convenient i like it i added some solar lights that aren't working either right here for a decorative finish uh, we had our first cookout yesterday and you could tell by the footage uh, the flames it was probably the highest i will ever get the flames because i was cooking a lot of meat and the grill was full so uh i don't think i'm ever gonna actually have a flame higher than that and it was absolutely fine like i was i would say like worrying heat was like still way down here and then you hit all of that so i think i'm all set for that it does get a little smoky in here but i could just run a, a fan if needed i could add an outlet in here if i need be add an outlet right up here and i could just do a little fan if if i ever really wanted to but for real, this is the end of the video. Go ahead and watch a different video if you want. And uh, see you guys on the next one. Actually, hold on.